Hey guys, Tech Hunter here with the video for you guys of the battle of the iPhone SE. As you can see here, I have the three iPhone SEs that have been released so far by Apple up to this point. So you have the first generation, second generation, and the third generation. And you might be thinking these are about the same, but that's because they look pretty much the same with some subtle differences which we're going to discuss. And then, of course, the iPhone SE first generation. Now, if you think about the timeline that these three were released was quite the difference. So the iPhone SE first generation here was released actually in 2016 of March. And then second generation was in April of 2020. So almost four years later, we got the iPhone second generation, which kind of surprised us. And then last year in March, of 2022 we got the third generation of the iphone se which looks very similar to the iphone second generation you might be thinking and in terms of so much similarities that they come in same colors as you can see the product red they also come in white and black as well the iphone se second generation third generation also resembles really like the iphone 8 as well so that's gonna be another big factor in point for all these phones so now let's talk about one thing which is the price point so right now apple is only selling the third generation of the iphone se starting at 429 for that 128 gig and then of course you can get it for more actually for the 64 gig so if you want to get 128 gig, you have to pay a little bit more, which is going to be around 479 and then 250 gigs, which is the max you can get on the iPhone third generation of it. Now, other thing to mention is that the second generation, now you can pretty much most likely will get a second end or if you buy it from eBay or Amazon, I'll leave some link in the description section. You can get it for around $150 to $200. And then the first generation, which most likely if you're buying it, it's pre-owned or used, it's going to be around $70, $80. So almost a fraction of the price for the other ones. Now, if you look at it closely, some of the characteristics that we're going to discuss is the display size here. So both of the second and third all comes with the 4.7 inch Retina HD display where the first generation, again, compact design here, just the four inch display which again really small here the one thing about the se here is that this is kind of some of the the design that apple went back to that solid design and that flat bezel versus these which have the rounded bezel which the iphone se second and third generation if you're to compare it they're pretty much going to be the same which i found interesting is that the color if you look at the color differences on the product red the second generation here has a lighter red and then the darker red is on the third generation here so in terms of body design you got the flat and then the rounded edges as well now other thing to mention is the camera here so all of them do have pretty much one camera itself they all have a 12 megapixel camera here the second and the third the third one apple deems it as an advanced camera but i don't know really what that means for itself now when it comes to the next talking point which is the battery life on these devices is that they're surprisingly different the iphone se first generation is rated to get to about 13 hours so is the second one and then the third one is 15 hours so battery improvement not something apple has done considering that if you think about the new iphone 14 lineup especially the pro, pro and the pro max they can get up to close to 24 hours of video playback when it, you kind of measure that specs itself so battery again okay size battery not the greatest but that's going to be the other thing now the next thing we want to talk about is the actual chipset on it which makes it a big difference so the iphone se first generation here originally came out with the a9 chip so that's kind of really outdated chip if you think about it almost slow which not really sure but if you think about that it almost updated to ios 15 so that's the latest version you can get on it and then the second generation has the a13 bionic chip again that's a lot improvement especially in the six core of cpu and four core of gpu and an eight core neural engine and then iphone the third generation here that we have has an A15 Bionic chip, 6 core of GPU and 4 core GPU and then 16 core neuro engine, almost double the amount of neuro engine. What does that really mean? Basically, if you're going to be comparing the SC with the second and the third, these are two powerful pocket side devices, which comes with that whole touch ID, which a lot of people probably enjoy. And the reason why you're probably sticking with the smaller form factor iPhone in terms of not getting a full body all display iPhone that you have on the market now. Now, the other thing you also want to mention in terms of connectivity is that only iPhone uh, third generation gives you 5G cellular support. Unfortunately, third, the second generation doesn't have it, and of course, fourth generation doesn't have it. Important factor, but something to mention as well. 
Now, other thing I wanted to mention is the limitation of the initial storage you get on these devices. So iPhone uh, SE gets from 16 gig, 32 gig, and 128 gig. And the iPhone second generation only gives you 64 gig and 128 gig configuration. And then the third generation maxes out at 256 gig. So if you're looking for 256 gig, which seems to be a sweet spot for the iPhone SE, that's where the third generation makes a difference for you. Now, other thing to consider on this iPhone in terms of the design is that water resistivity. The iPhone SE first generation is not water resistant and something you want to be careful when it comes to water. Of course, second and the third both are IP67 rated. But with these two phones, because they're made out of all glass back and front, which supports wireless charging, is that you, if there's a crack or damage, you can compromise that water seal and it could damage the phone. So be careful when it comes to when things are water resistant or they're really water resistant. Again, something to kind of consider and think about. And then talking about other thing about all of these phones is that their cameras are pretty decent here. So we already mentioned that they have a single 12 megapixel camera with the third generation being a little bit beefed up. It also has things like diffusion of uh, photographic styles, which isn't available on the iPhone second generation. And when it comes to video recording, all of them actually can record 4K. Surprisingly, it does support 4K, but when it comes to going into frames per second, the first generation only goes up to 30 frames per second where the Second and the third can go up to 60 frames per second in 4K. So something to kind of worth the bug and a decent camera. An Apple usually does a good job with it. But if you're really looking for the best camera, go with the second or the third generation. And also the night mode is only available on the third generation itself. And finally, to conclude the software of these phones. So I mentioned here the iPhone SE first generation surprisingly made it up to iOS 15, which is a really big shock for us, and that means that it's still getting those security updated. And if you really like a small phone that's still somewhat usable, decent, this is where the first generation SE comes in, and it's super budget friendly. You got the Touch ID going on, similar to like iPhone 6, that's if you would consider, but a small factored phone, which I see a uh, popularity in terms of its compact design and being able to be really slick and that mo design that Apple went back to. And then the talking about the second generation, now it does go up to iOS 16. We're upgrading to iOS 16. The other thing also to note about the iPhone second generation is the cost efficiency as well. You're going to be paying around 150, under 200 for sure if you're looking for pre-owned device for the iPhone. SC here again, really powerful device. Don't let that uh, uh, the actual chipset on it confuse you because this does really deliver power. And a lot of people that still use it recommend that it's a good device similar to the iPhone. Again, eight, and if you have, like the Touch ID, that's where it goes. And then lastly, the third generation here, of course, because it was just recently released, it's gonna probably get at least another four to five years of major software updates. So if you're looking for a phone that it has a touch screen, has that small form factor, and you really like that compact design, the iPhone SE, which you can directly get it from Apple, is available for you. So that's kind of the review of the iPhone, the three iPhone SEs here. Again, aged iPhone over the time here. The second and third generation is probably what you're going to be looking at if you're looking to be budget friendly, but the first generation, again, OG device that still delivers in for the more minimalistic design and the functionality, but power comes in starting with the second and above. So that's our review of it. I want to hear from you guys. What's your thought on the iPhone SE lineup? Is there going to be a next SE coming out anytime soon? What does that look like? Have you used any of the SE? Leave a comment in the comment section to share with us your experiences. So I hope this video made some clarification and also want to hear everything you guys have to say in the comment section i will see you guys next time and thanks for watching and hit that like and subscribe button see you guys next time